Hi friends, I'm gonna share with you something that I've been working on. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you read this, but this is a piece of an excerpt um, that I am in the middle of, and I'm gonna share it with you today because it's coming out elsewhere soon. And I figure I might as well bring it to you first, even though it feels a little bit vulnerable for me. So um, here goes, I'm gonna start with this. Then I realized the passively suicidal voice in my head that I can no longer blame on my mother after 36 years is an inner narcissist who wants me dead, still. A narcissist who has zero empathy for me, lives alongside a codependent personality in me who experiences empathy for everybody else, as if I'm not a somebody who deserves my own compassion. It's just that I didn't project my narcissism outward, but inward. This is what I mean by claiming our inner narcissist. So I am in the middle of writing about this, but um, this is gonna be very specific and I, I do wanna clarify this because I am not traditionally speaking to people who just come in contact with a sociopath later in life and feel like dizzy because like what the hell just happened. Um, I am speaking to those of us who were systematically eroded by them because we were raised by them or eroded however you'd want to look at that I would look at it like eroded um, <clears throat> and I'm speaking to the people in that process who identify as empaths so if you are an empath and you were raised by a narcissistic human being um, that is a frequency a paradigm a life that normal people don't even hook onto that paradigm. It's just not even a thing for them. They can't even tap into it, don't even realize it, what kind of crazy is going on there, right? Um, normal people don't frequent the, the what I now look at as this codependent narcissistic continuum. And I think that for people like us, right? Like when I realized, okay, I have this voice in my head that, you know, my, my mother, I've, I've healed my relationship with my mother. She's woken up. I was there the morning she woke up and I feel very grateful for that, right? Like I'm speaking this metaphorically. It's like watching one of your kids, oh my God, just take their first step and you know everything changes from that moment, right? <clears throat> she also woke up because I woke up. I wasn't gonna stay asleep on her behalf anymore, right? So when I woke up and I was like, okay, this is like, this is what's up. Like I'm awake and I'm gonna knock you senseless and not in a, in a literal sense, but like, this is real. I'm going to hold a mirror to this in a, in a way that's like uh, not confrontational for you, but like real for me. And you can just watch because this is like done. This dynamic is done with us. Um, so I was not a doormat. That is not how I personally shifted my generational healing in a way that benefits everybody in my system. But the fact is I grew up with a very narcissistic mother. And it's still funny because I don't like to call that what it is because it's also, you know, she was sleeping, she was unconscious, and that is no excuse for the things that she did to me. Um, but the fact is, is that right now at this point in my life, if I wanna have a normal life, I have to get right with my ideas of creator because when you have a narcissistic mother, especially as an empath, you're the ambivalence of everything that you get everything that you give, everything that you want, like you're not allowed to want, you're not allowed to take up space. Um, you will be punished for getting what you want. You're only allowed to get what you want if you don't ask for it, right? Like your, ne your wants are really like not needs. So um, there's this constant devaluation that goes on. And when you are tr a child developing a sense of who you are allowed to be in the world and who, like staying in the frequency of your true self, your will, space right when you're a child uh, coming out with your own authority and somebody keeps shoving you back in you learn very quickly that you, it's better you have to perform and you have to be fake if you want to be loved and then you grow up uh, you know acting from that place and feeling like you're not even alive on the inside you're probably getting sick you're constantly exhausted you have autoimmune diseases whatever that is um, and we have this also, this inner dialogue that replicates the outer dialogue that we grow up having, right? And then we have it with creator and our life kind of uh, systematically looks like a representation of how we felt about 
our relationships with our mothers until we heal, right? So if you are, and I, I drew this little thing for you, it's like super makeshift really quickly, but if you can see this, this is how I look at it, right? So if the cross point right here, if you look at this um, just codependent narcissistic continuum as a wave frequency through your brain, right? It's just a blueprint. It's a particular vibration that goes straight through your brain. It's okay that it exists as long as you don't, it's like a cave that you can visit, but once you get out of the cave and you, you like understand your shadows and you understand the flesh in the cave and you step outside of this, the cave, you no longer have to live there, right? It's a territory that like is in you, but you're no longer gonna have to live there. So the paradigm that exists in our minds is this cognitive blueprint, right? And if we're super on one side of codependent, right? Because, and the problem with codependency is that it's inauthentic because we, you know, I said to somebody the other day, which like was almost dangerous coming out of my mouth, but it was also true in this case. She was talking about, can ever like, does everybody have a vice? And kindness, or I should say niceties, can be a vice, right? So if we are constantly making other people comfortable at the expense of ourselves, why is that any different than somebody going and snorting blow all weekend long, right? Like if we are constantly um, shutting ourselves down because we're allowing that, that same, what we could call a negative interdict, we could call it our inner narcissist, that same mother figure that cut us down, every time we try to self-initiate, if we have that replicated in our minds, um, we are in a holding pattern. And maybe this is what borderline is, right? We're in this holding pattern. Um, so, and I don't know, I'm just like throwing that out there. Maybe I should take that back and not say that. But um, I, th I believe that the medicine for people like us who have polarized so far to one side because we're so afraid of the punishment that will happen if we confront the inner narcissist or the exterior narcissist. Now it's the inner we're working with, but in our, you know, when we were still under a, the hypnagogic space of childhood, this is the only reference we had for communicating with our maker, right? So if we are still inside of ourselves operating from that mother who is shaming us and cutting us down every time that we uh, wanted to self-initiate, um, every time that we uh, protested our own, you know, right to not be hit or will or whatever, um, it's confrontational to consider that we actually have to walk that little codependent person who wants to be nice up to that inner narcissist in us that's constantly shaming us and telling it to go fuck off, right? Because the truth is, is that when we can exit the paradigm, right? When we can exit that paradigm, then we can, you know, we can transcend that paradigm. Again, it becomes the cave instead of the thing that we live in. It's just like a place that we can visit. Um, and integration really is about, okay, I am, I, I see the paradigm and in my experience, what I mean by this is that when we come closer to the side that we were so afraid to confront because it was going to punish us so, you know, it was going to punish us for confronting with our essence. We were not allowed to have a sense of will, a sense of like our own, you know, feelings or emotions, whatever. Our, our world didn't matter if it wasn't for that image that suited them and what suited them at the time. It's confrontational to confront that, but when we can move closer from that space of codependency, we're, all, we're always pleasing and whatnot, and we can come and confront and stay centered in between these two polarities that exist in us. One is like, you're an absolute piece of shit and you should kill yourself, right? And the other is like, you have to be nice to prove your worth and serve constantly and slave constantly. And you know, the meeting in the middle, because if, if you're raised by a narcissistic mother, nothing ever adds up nothing's ever good enough right so you can try all day every day you can literally kill yourself in front of her it's not going to be good enough right um so for people like us i see it as like an energetic where when we can get centered in the paradigm in the mind right and we can hold that maybe this is what people call alignment and we can hold that that space and then we can move and expand from that kind of like, okay, if I'm centered here, I can bring it down, right? And I can, the problem is that we're always over here like horizontal in our mind. We're stuck in this paradigm, we're stuck in this paradigm. We can't even get into our own essence, right? So if we can center in the paradigm, 
we can drop into the essence that they told us to forget about that didn't matter oh my god she's crying again she's sensitive she doesn't like that i'm hitting her how dare she care that like i'm perpetrating against her she should love me and be grateful for the things that i give her she's a spoiled bitch and blah 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 right like that whole dynamic is gonna go on in our minds every time we get something until we can center in this paradigm and go okay how can i in my own mind simultaneously let both exist and know that neither are me because when i get into my will space and when i get centered i go oh yeah you're chatting you're chatting we have a codependents have a super uh over exaggerated super ego right uh if you took my course you know what i'm talking about when i say this but um if we can halt the chatter and honor the inner animal as well right the thing that we're so afraid to touch because we've been smacked every time we touched it in ourselves the animal in you that has a want the animal in you that like you know wants to take up space or like wants to not care what people are thinking about it and wants to be able to just live without having concerns about like how it suits your image or whatever if we can come to center on that then we can up level paradigms right or downgrade whatever but when we come to center in the horizontal i see it then we can move in the vertical and when we are moving in the vertical it's crazy because then you can you realize like holy shit there is a whole new world out there and my relationships now uh in my intimate relationship which i suspect would be the same as like you know your relationship with your mother in childhood um it reflects to me a relationship also with creator that is i'm allowed to be here and i'm allowed to breathe and i don't have to pay for my air constantly and i don't have to um prove to my air why i'm worth it constantly and i get to walk into spaces and leave and not feel like i should feel shame for having been there or existing or saying the wrong thing or being too loud or not being whatever right um saying the wrong thing so i think that when i say that we are to be claiming the inner narcissist it is not like oh we have to go out and be narcissistic in the world that's not at all what i'm saying what I'm saying is that we have to recognize that um, the only polarities we saw because we're an empath feeling into the voids of these cluster B personalities in our lives and then we see all the suffering in the world and we're like, I have to be the opposite of you. I literally almost have to rebel against everything that you are. Even when, and that's tricky because when they're in our DNA, like when it's your mother, <laughs> Um, if you're rebelling against everything she is, you're also not honoring your own inner animal, which is biologically wired to what she is, right? So um, when, when we are rebelling codependently against that way of being because we are an empath and we see the suffering of the world and, and we want to heal the world, right? My mom always used to say, why do you feel this responsibility to heal the world? Why do you care? Um, when we polarize to that side, it can feel really confrontational to hear me say like, no, we have to actually claim that like our rebellion against that, that way of like narcissistic abuse and that concern for not caring, our rebellion against that way of being because we're so like, who could do this? It's fine to think that, but if you're in a friction rebellion against it, you're still locked into the paradigm, right? So my experience has been that if I claim my inner narcissist and I get closer to it and I go, okay, well, um, okay, now what? That's fine. You're here. You exist. You're not right. You're not wrong. Um, but I see you and I don't have to believe you. I don't also have to become you. I don't have to rebel against you, right? Um, it's like when you just love somebody, you see what's there and you might or might not like it. And when I can see all of that going on inside of my own brain, when you can see those polarities, I mean, the awareness itself is immeasurable for what it can do for your personal growth because when you can even see that you have objectively expanded beyond it so 